Let's talk Israeli response. So, as we now know, Iran launched an unprecedented massive strike against the Israelis. It launched 185 drones, 110 ballistic missiles, and 36 cruise missiles from Yemen, Yemen, from Yemen, from Iran, and partially from Lebanon. All of this swarm of missiles and drones came towards Israel. The Israelis, along with the US, along with Jordan, along with Saudi Arabia, UK, and France, shot everything down, with the exception of two or three rockets that got by and basically did very little damage and one injury. Now, right now, everybody's wondering what's going to be the response from the Israelis, because they have said in the past that if Iran chooses to strike Israel from Iran, then they will retaliate. So now everybody's wondering what that retaliation is going to look like. People in Iran are basically going over the checklist of what an imminent attack would look like. And they're stocking up on fuel and food. They're bracing for impact. Now, the question is whether the Israelis are going to respond or not is basically more of a political question than a military strategic one. And I'll explain. Right now, there's clear signs that the Iranians are not interested in waging full-scale war with the Israelis and with the U.S. Why? Well, for two reasons. Number one, they don't have a nuclear weapon yet, which they would like to have before launching a proper war against the Israelis. And number two, they see that uh, President Biden and his administration is up to their neck in a pile of manure back home with Gaza, with the Palestinian situation. And they don't want to bail out the Biden administration by giving them a proper war where Iran is the aggressor. So they're not interested in a full-scale war. On the other hand, the United States is an election year. And right now, Biden is saying to himself, look, if we actually launch a war against Iran, which will definitely escalate to a regional war, what we're going to have is a complete chaos in the supply chain of energy because the energy prices will spike. Iran is going to be out of commission. Who knows what Iran does to other energy suppliers because their energy resources might get compromised. So there's a good chance that a regional war in the Middle East is going to spike oil prices. If oil prices spike now, this means that the whole campaign of Biden of lowering inflation in the United States is going to go to the toilet because oil prices are going to push inflation up. And then he won't have an option to say, well, I lowered inflation from 9% to 3%, right? Now, inflation still sucks. Don't get me wrong, but it will be much, much worse if energy prices get pushed up. So right now, the election standpoint here is we need to wrap up Gaza, the U.S. election, yeah? wrap up Gaza, finish that war, and don't start any new regional wars that might push oil prices up. On the flip side, the Iranians are doing the same, saying, hey, we don't want a war right now. The only ones who are interested in proper attacking Iran right now are the Israelis, because they feel like they got, um, you know, absolutely violated, because a sovereign country just shot uh, 400 rockets and drones into their territory, and they're saying to themselves, we have to respond to this. We're not going to just take it. Now, they might not respond. They might respond. But there's a few scenarios here. Scenario number one is that the Israelis don't respond at all. Scenario number two is that they respond with a strike on Iranian soil. Response number three is that they respond with a limited strike maybe on Iranian soil, but most likely in Lebanon, some more Iranian assets in Syria or Lebanon or maybe the Houthi rebels, I don't know, something limited like that. Now, the fact of the matter is that the Iranians not hitting anything, essentially their entire attack got basically ended up with one injury and no proper damage and nothing really, there was no damage, right? So the lack of damage opens up the possibility that the Israelis might just say, you know what, you just swung at us, we dodged, so we win, option number one. That is possible because of the lack of damage. If this thing would have annihilated the you know, Israeli military bases and have caused damage, different story. Option number two is that they do something limited in, Le in Lebanon, to Hezbollah, to Syria. That right now seems like the more plausible option. Because right now, the U.S. is basically telling the Israelis, look, you can't do this without us. You need our support to strike Iran. You need our logistical support. You need our political support. You need the coalition. You need all the stuff. You can't do it alone. And we are not agreeing to this. We're in election year. This is going to screw up everything. We don't agree. We do not consent. 
So the Israelis don't have the option of attacking Iran with U.S. blessing. Is there a chance they might do it anyways? Yes. Is this a high chance? No. I don't think it's a probable scenario. I also th don't think it's a probable scenario that the Israelis would not respond at all because lack of response completely, just taking it and not doing anything, is going to cause so much bad PR for Benjamin Netanyahu's government was going to be in shambles because he's basically writing this mandate of, oh, I'm going to win the war and I'm going to bring back the, the security. And he's Mr. Anti-Iran. His entire persona is basically, I'm against Iran. I'm going to punish Iran. I want to talk Iran. If Iran just fired 400 missiles and drones to Israel and he does nothing, his career is over. So Benjamin Netanyahu cannot afford himself politically not to respond. So if the U.S. cannot afford to attack and Benjamin now cannot afford not to respond, I think they find the middle ground where they find some sort of response, maybe something to Hezbollah, Syria, something, maybe something in Iran, small, some sort of response that saves Benjamin Netanyahu's face and doesn't cause political damage in the US and does not start a regional war in the Middle East. That's what I think happens. And I think it's mostly going to be a political decision, but hey, this is the Middle East. We're going to find out soon enough. And there's no doubt you should get your popcorn ready because this is about to be interesting. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.